good evening. It's good to see you back with us this evening. And even though it's hot outside, it's nice in here. And uh, any opportunity we've got to come together, we need to take advantage of that. We don't know where the Lord's going to come back. We don't know what troubles we're going to run into tomorrow. That encouragement and love and strength together can help today. So it's always good when we can come together. You know, the world is doing its best because the world itself is under the influence of the devil. It's doing its best to dishearten us, to discourage us from falling God. From the very beginning, the devil tempted when he tempted Eve. He used deceit, he used lies. And one of the biggest lies that the devil uses even today, if it's not Oh, God's not going to care. He loves you anyway. If it's not that one, it would be the one that God will change his mind. God will love me anyway. It doesn't matter what I do, God loves me. And that's the devil working people's minds to get them to believe something that's not true. This evening's lesson is called God is Faithful. It's something that we need to remember. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. God is faithful. God will not go back on what He stated He will do. If it was stated by God that it was wrong and it was a sin, I don't care if it was 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago. If it was sin then, it's sin today. Changing the social structure, changing in uh, social morality, changes of culture, changes of technology is irrelevant. God's right and wrong does not change. This is what he says here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we believe not, in other words, if we choose to turn our back on God, yet He abideth faithful. In other words, God's not going to change. He's going to do what He said He's going to do. Look what it says after that. He cannot deny Himself. It is against God's nature to do anything contrary to Himself. <coughs> he cannot do it. God is righteous. God is good. God is pure. <coughs> he is perfect. For Him to excuse someone, now, now, this is the lie that the devil tries to tell you, God loves you anyway. He knows. He cares for you. He'll, he understands your heart. He'll, he'll accept you the way you are. For him to excuse someone and save them anyway, contrary to his law that he has specified, would make him unrighteous. Would be contrary to his existence or who he is. That's what he's saying here when he says he cannot deny himself. So this is a direct contrast what the world wants to believe. That's why I stated it the way I did, that it, it falls in the line with what the devil has always done from the beginning. He lies. And he wants us to believe a lie. How many of us have heard people out in the world say, well, I love God. He knows I love Him. He'll accept me as I am. He'll accept my offer and no music. He understands I'm not perfect. All these different things. Love it if we sin willfully. There's no sacrifice for sin. If we choose to obey a law contrary to God's law, in other words, man-made tradition, that doesn't make it right. God will not accept sacrifice or worship under the pretense or the banner of false religion. 
That is contrary to his existence. That's contrary to what he is. He is perfect. He is righteous. To sweep under the carpet man's unrighteousness and ignore it is completely contradictory to God. Therefore, it will not happen. No matter what the devil says. God is faithful to fulfill. He will keep his word. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. It says, Faithful is he that calleth you. Who calls us? God calls us. Through the word. Who also will what? Will do it. In other words, he's faithful to you. He calls you from His Word, calls you to be righteous, He calls you to be children of God, He calls you to be saved, He calls you to have eternal life, He calls you to worship Him. You do that, you follow through with that, and what do we find? He is faithful and just to what? Do what He promises. You see, in Mark chapter 7, on you know, down around verse 13, it says that we make the Word of God an effect in our lives when we want to follow traditions of men. Traditions of men are lies from the devil. Well, he loves you anyway, like I stated a while ago. That's one of the, the devil's favorites. He loves you. He'll accept you. All you got to do is worship him. Well, what do we find in Matthew 7, 20? 1. Many in that day shall call and they'll say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name of many wonderful works, and in thy name cast out devils? Then I will profess unto them, Depart from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because they weren't doing what God called them to do. They weren't being faithful. He is faithful. He will keep His word. We cannot approach God on our own terms. We are not equal to God. We are not His equal. Therefore, we don't have the right to make our own standards. We must keep God's standards. We must do God's will. And what we do, He is faithful to His word. Look with me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Second Thessalonians 3, verse 3. Listen to what Paul said here. But the Lord is faithful. Again, we find that faithful. Why does He keep saying that? Because He wants you to know and wanted them to know that God will do what He says. You can trust God to do what He says He will do. He says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you. In other words, will place you where you need to be. What has He promised us to do? When we obey the gospel, when we, when we do what the Bible tells us to do, when we keep His commandments, he will then take us and translate us from the kingdom of darkness into what? In the kingdom of His dear Son. He takes us and puts us where we need to be. That's what Paul said. He will establish you. He will put you where you need to be. He will put you in His grace. But we do what we're supposed to do. Look what else He says here. And what keep you from evil? God will take care of you. He will protect you. You can trust Him. You see, this is so important. This is good to know because this works both ways. Not only will do, do we realize and understand that if we don't do what's right, we're going to be punished, but it also says that when we are doing right, when we are faithful, when we are serving God, that He will not go back on His covenant with us. It's good to know because that works both ways. We're not going to keep the covenant and be faithful all of our lives and come judgment day find that God's changed His mind. No. Just as Hebrews says, we find it, it is an eternal covenant. Just as God does not change, 
the covenant will not change. Just as God is faithful, so is the covenant order to be faithful and true. This is good to know. It should make you feel good and comforted to know that the Almighty God, the all-powerful God, the omnipotent God, is on your side. And will love you to reward you. And never change from His love for you. It's good to know. Look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And you'll see one of the benefits. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. This means God's listening. God's paying attention. He says, I will forgive you. Christ's blood, his shed blood, Hebrews chapter 9, is an eternal offering. It is an offering that's perfect and will always be. It's an eternal offering. Therefore, I will forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent. Come home. I will forgive you. It means God is faithful. He's watching you. He's listening. He's waiting for you. And when we make a mistake, God's listening to you. Are you coming home? I still love you. I know you made a mistake. I will love you. Come home. God's not going to give up on us. He's there waiting, looking. You don't want to stand at the door and knock. Go oh, I'm with you always. Never far from you. Waiting, listening, responding. He is faithful. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God is faithful to provide for us. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to what bear it. This is I said well ago, God's told us I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is there by my side. When I confront a situation, He's there to help me find my battles. He wants me to win. The battle's already been fought. God's already decided the outcome of the battle. It's already been decided who the victor's going to be. The final enemy to be defeated will be death itself. And when the Lord returns, that enemy will be defeated. The devil's done a good look, and he knows it. That's why when the Lord approached the man named Legions, the, the devil spoke out of him and said, We know who thou art, thou, thou art the Son of the Most High God. Hast thou come to torment us before the time? They know what their destiny is. They've already lost. So when I confront a situation, a battle, of the Lord staying there waiting for me to decide if I'm going to fight, am I going to do my best to remain faithful to God? And when I do, God says He's being faithful, I'm going to be faithful. Here's a way to get out of this. I need help. That's what that means. When I demonstrate my devotion, my love, God says, I love you. Here's a way out. Let me help you. God will never let me. I can let him down. He won't let me down. Okay, yeah, that's something to remember. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. He is faithful to what he has told us to do. The writer of Hebrews says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. In other words, let us stand fast for the truth. The truth is what has set us free. The truth is what has guided us to understand and know who our Lord and Savior is. It has told us the path that we must follow. Let us hold fast to that profession of our faith. Let us remain faithful to God. 
You look what he says after that. For he what? He is faithful that promised. The promises that are within the covenant, God will keep. I will promise to give you eternal life. I promise to forgive your sins. I promise to bless you here and now, breast down, shake and run over here and now and for all eternity. I promise you to be with me in heaven. You'll sing a new song in heaven. You'll be before the throne of God. You'll be the tree of life in heaven with me. And the list goes on and on and on and on. All the things that God has promised. As a matter of fact, we don't know all of them. For I have not seen nor you have heard all the good things that God will do for us. That He has promised and He therefore will keep His word. We have reason therefore what? To remain faithful. To trust God. God has never let us down nor will He ever. He has never turned his back on us, nor will he ever. He has never allowed us to be defeated in a battle that we didn't choose to lose. He is there always for us. And will always be there for us. We are his creation created to love for his pleasure. And we got to keep in mind that why did God create us? Why did He create all of this universe? We talked about this on uh, uh, Wednesday night, and I encourage you to come and listen to what we're talking about on Wednesday night in Genesis. He created the universe. He created the sun, the moon, the stars. All that we see, everything He created for the sole purpose to sustain us here and now. The earth could not be where it is, could not function where it is if the universe was, was not in the position that it is in. He created it for seasons, for times, for passing of time. He created time for us. Everything that was created is for us. Why? As He purposed it in His heart before the foundation of the world was laid, that we would be with Him. That's what God wants. He wants those who love Him to be with Him for all the time. And he will not let us down. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And remember this. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. He will never change. He will always be my advocate with the Father. He will always be my Lord and Savior. He will always be my Master. He will always be the Creator. All things were created by Him and for Him. was not anything made that was made except by Him. He is the Word. He is the Logos. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created by Him. He purposed in his mind and heart and knew and understood before the foundation of the world that he would become a man. As the Hebrew writer says, he made a little lower than the angels. Why? Paul tells us because he loved you. He became flesh and dwelt among you for the purpose to be a sacrifice for you for your sins. What a wonderful message to know and understand that God loves me that much. He loves me that much. Love me from the beginning, beloved. He's not going to stop loving me. He's going to love me all the way through. And he will do what he says. He will keep his word. Because he loves me. <coughs> all I have to do is demonstrate my love for him. Look at Deuteronomy 7 and 9. This will sum up. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. There is none other beside Him. He is God, period. There are no other gods. Does man make up gods? Yes. But there is no other God. There's only one God. He is God. The what? Faithful God. Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that what? Love Him. Remember the conditions I told you all the way through this lesson tonight? Loving Him, doing what He sold. He keeps His covenant with us. 
He gives us mercy that love Him. That is the condition. And keep His commandments to what? A thousand generations. That is a, not a literal number. That's just a number to mean from now on. We know that because in, in second uh, Acts chapter 2, Peter says, The promise is to you and as many as are far off. The Lord our God shall call. All we have to do is love Him. And He will keep His word. Now, does He keep His word with those who don't love Him? He does. He's told those that do not love Him, do not keep His commandments, that their destiny is sealed. He cast into the outer darkness away from the presence of God for all eternity. See, we are eternal beings. We're in the flesh here and now. We're, we're eternal beings created in the image of God. And we're living here and now deciding where our eternity is going to be by our actions. And God saying, follow me, love me. I'm here for you. I'll help you. I want you to be with me. I won't let you down. I am faithful to you. Let us make the right decision. Let us choose to follow our faithful God who loves us. And promise us eternity with Him in heaven. Because, beloved, we're going to be in one place or the other. God's word says so. And he is faithful to keep that word. Let us choose the loving and the blessed son. By obeying God's commandments and be with him. Here this evening, you need to respond to the Lord's invitation. You need to prayers to the church. You need us to help you in some way. We're here for you. We love you. God loves you. Let us help you.